Hello, good crowd. I am so excited to introduce you to Alex Budak. He's a faculty member at UC Berkeley Haas School of Business. Uh, I first wrote about uh, Alex uh, and his work, oh my gosh, eight years ago in my book, Your Mark on the World, the book that started all of this. Uh, and here as we wrap up the final 50 episodes of the Your Mark on the World show, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Alex. You do not want to miss this episode. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Our sponsor, Johnson & Johnson, matches most individual donations up to $250 at caringcrowd.org. Alex, welcome to the show. Devin, such a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're excited to talk to you. You know, uh, recently I got talking to um, Bill Drayton. Uh, and perhaps you saw that episode, but, uh, you know, of course, Bill uh, kind of um, invented this concept of a change maker and a social entrepreneur coined the term and uh, founder of Ashoka. He's a big deal. Um, and he shared some thoughts about uh, teaching the concept of change making. Uh, but I was excited when you reach out when you reached out to suggest that you had some additional insights that we could get, because I think it's so important to think about how we teach these principles, how we can all learn to be better change makers. So um, thank you very, very much for taking the time to, to be with us and share some thoughts. But um, uh, you had said uh, that you had a couple of specific tips and your first tip was that uh, companies and uh, communities, uh, the world are really type, calling out for a new type of leader. Tell us about your idea of a new type of leader. Well, it's so much fun to be at the Haas School of Business. You know, it's the second oldest business school in the country, but really thinking ahead to the future, not stuck in the past. So here at Berkeley Haas, I've developed a course called Becoming a Changemaker, which is all about this forward-looking type of leadership. So I think we've gotten to a point in the world where a lot of our old habits of leadership, we realize, just aren't working. The hierarchical nature, the idea of the CEO sitting in the corner office and giving out commands from on high, um, that doesn't work anymore. And so the question now is, what type of leadership does work? And my belief is that the leadership of the future is changemaker leadership. So I get to teach students about things like humility, trust, collaboration, resilience, courage. And I think these are the traits more and more so that will uh, define what leadership means um, today and in the future. Yeah, those are really uh, important skills. Uh, and how do you teach young aspiring leaders to adopt those traits? What are the, the techniques you use to teach that? Well, can I just say that if you ever start feeling bad about the state of the world, just meet some of these Berkeley change makers. They are incredible. This diverse, inspiring group of students, and they will really um, give you faith in, in the future generations. So you're right. You know, we're talking about concepts which may seem a bit abstract. So the way I structure my class is to, everything's grounded in academic frameworks and research. So I'll present some theories, some empirical studies around these concepts that I've found are the future of leadership. But then it's also a very hands-on course. So we put what we're learning into practice. So for instance, one major part of being a change maker is the ability to take smart risks and to continue on even in the, in the face of setbacks, which if you're creating any type of positive change, it's inevitable you're going to fail. So in the third week of class, I tell students, okay, we've got an assignment for you. You have 15 minutes, you have to go leave the classroom, and you have to go fail. You have to go get rejected. Doesn't matter what you do, but you have to go up and ask someone for something, and they have to say no. If you ask them and they say yes, then you've actually failed. That's not correct. You need to actually succeed by failing. So I introduce this to students, and you can see somatically they start responding, they start sweating, they start turning red, their hearts are beating faster, uh, and they're nervous with this idea that they have to go out and purposely fail. But the energy when the students come back in the classroom having successfully failed is incredible. This um, cloud is lifted off of them, but what's so empowering is that they realize that they ask for crazy things, and Devin, sometimes people actually say yes, 
And so we realize how often we set ourselves up for failure simply by not asking for something when we may get it after all. What, those, what are some examples of the things people ask for and successfully get rejected? Uh, you know, a whole array of things. There's one woman who asked another woman, hey, can I borrow your shoes? Uh, someone who walked into the school gym and said, hi, it's not my birthday, but will you sing happy birthday to me? Uh, <laughs> one guy stood outside in the rain with an umbrella and tried to get people to switch umbrellas with him. And then no one would. But then on the flip side, you know, there was one guy who asked a student, said, hey, I have to walk all the way across campus. I don't have an umbrella. Would you walk me? This is a 20 minute walk. And the guy said, okay, he would do it. That's a good reminder of all the kindness and generosity that, yeah. that exists in the world. That is really uh, an amazing anecdote. Uh, and there are probably a few rainy days at Berkeley. Uh, I've been there for some. Um, you talk a little bit about, uh, as your second tip, the mindset and leadership skills uh, a change maker needs are learnable and practicable. Tell, tell me a little bit about how we learn and practice the, the necessary leadership skills of a change maker. Sure. So, I mean, one important leadership skill, I think, is the ability to influence without formal authority. So in the old fashioned days of leadership, you could be the CEO and tell someone to do it and they'll do it simply by virtue of your title. In today's world, hierarchies are flatter and much more complicated. You're working across cultures, across geographies, oftentimes with people we've never even met in person. And so a big question is how do you influence people when you can't force them to do something? And so we get students to think um, from the bottom up, okay, how might I influence someone? Uh, and so we talk about things like uh, leading with empathy and developing relationships and being a good listener, um, all things that go into being a good influencer, but oftentimes very counterintuitive. Uh, students wouldn't be blamed if we look at uh, many of the leaders we have in big companies or in politics today and think that there's one type of prototypical leader that's needed. But I think actually it's perhaps counterintuitive, but students get that this is the type of leadership we need. And so we give them the chance to both learn what leadership looks like in today's world and to go practice it. That is uh, powerful stuff. Now you have spent your whole career in a combination of learning about change making and doing change making how have you drawn on your personal experience doing those two things to develop your curriculum yeah my, my grandmother liked to say that no experience is ever wasted and i really feel that in the work that i do everything builds upon itself so devin you and i first met as you mentioned nearly a decade ago can you believe that uh, when I was, I co-founded and was helping to lead Start Some Good, which is a platform for uh, crowdfunding for social entrepreneurs. You, this is beautiful. You raised funds for your book, Your Mark on the World with us. That's how we first met. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I first jumped in with Start Some Good. You know, I felt a calling to create this. I've always said, I don't know exactly what the world needs, but the world needs more change makers pursuing their own vision of social change whether that's a book or a startup or an initiative or a project. And so in leading Start Some Good, I got this amazing uh, bird's eye view into the world of social innovation. So there I was both experiencing for myself what it meant to be a social entrepreneur, trying to build a scalable, sustainable social venture. But also we had some of the best social entrepreneurs coming to us to raise funds, especially early stage. And I was learning, getting to see what trends there were, what types of enterprises were being started, but also, especially working with such early stage social ventures, seeing where were the places where people got tripped up, seeing some of those patterns. Uh, and then very naturally looking back, although of course it didn't make sense <laughs> at the moment, uh, but my next step after Start Some Good was to lead an incubator for social entrepreneurs in Stockholm, Sweden. And so it's due to that incubator that I got a chance to sort of pause and recognize all the things I had learned while leading and trying to grow start some good that I was just too busy in the moment to actually recognize. And there I was coaching and working with these social entrepreneurs. And I think that's where I really fell in love with the idea of working hand in hand with these change makers. And you know, they have the brilliant ideas, they have the passion. And if I can just help make them a little bit more effective, um, amazing things can happen. Well, in your notes for me, you gave me you know, a third tip, which was to teach change makers, we must change the way we teach. What's the key change that we need to make in our teaching methodology to create change makers? 
Well, I try to practice what I preach. So I tell students on the first day that I'm going to try teaching this class as a change maker myself. So that means not being afraid to try new things and to, to fail. You know, at a prestigious university like UC Berkeley, there's a lot of pressure to try to do things the right way. And there's a long history in academia of one single path. And so I think it's important that we have the uh, courage to step away from the expected roles, expected expectations of what a teacher means. Uh, so that means flipping the classroom. I tell students from day one that we are co-producers in this, that they're going to learn as much from each other as they will from me. It's doing these experiential exercises. Um, it's bringing refreshing and new texts into the classroom, uh, raising up the voices of diverse authors and diverse videos and individuals that can um, inspire all types of change makers. You know, as an example, in my change maker course, we do a change maker of the week assignment. That means that each student gets to choose one change maker who inspires them, and they do a presentation to the class where their job is to make the case given what we've learned about change makers, about these mindsets, these leadership skills, make the case for why this person is a change maker. And in so doing, they get to one, both see themselves reflected in these great change makers, and they get to introduce the class to all types of different change makers. So by the time the class finishes, each student will have met and been inspired by 40 different change makers, people perhaps I didn't even know going into the class, which is so exciting for me. What are some of the surprising examples that the students have drawn on for the change maker of the week? You know, one thing I love is that in the class I taught last semester, three of the change makers were parents. They were someone's dad or mom. And I think it's beautiful to think about getting that inspiration for a change maker from within the family. You know, we often think about a change maker being someone who's a household name, a Rosa Parks or a Jackie Robinson. And to be sure, those are amazing change makers. Uh, but there's also something incredible to be said for the guy who was talking about his dad and his approach to servant leadership and how he served his community and served them in a really thoughtful and deep way. And so I think it's beautiful to be able to bridge that gap between the sort of everyday change makers as well as the, the household names. Yeah, for sure. As you look back over your career, Alex, what are you most proud of having accomplished so far? Ooh. Well, I think the, the main thing is everything that I do is in service of helping more people become change makers. And so I am not done yet. And anything that I've done is through collaboration with amazing other change makers. But uh, I'm proud to have been able to partner hand in hand with all kinds of amazing change makers, whether that's people like you raising funds on Start Some Good and helping give that initial boost, that initial capital you need to get started, to the Swedish uh, social entrepreneurs I worked with in Stockholm, uh, to these students in, in Berkeley. And I think. Um, teaching is incredibly difficult, and, but incredibly rewarding. And there's an amazing moment when I can feel that light bulb go off in a student's head where they make that cognitive switch, where they go, I get it. I can be a change maker. And that moment, whether that comes in week one or week 15, is so profound and so meaningful to me as, as, a, as a faculty. Yeah, excellent. Alex, you have been so deliberate about this, so studied, uh, and yet so action-oriented. I wonder, as you look back, what the most single most important lesson you've learned is. Hmm. That's an amazing question, and one that, if I'm truly going to be deliberative, probably I need more time <laughs> to think about. Um, but I think it really comes down to being willing to have the courage to put yourself out there, and that you can't possibly know what's going to happen or what's next, but being having a conviction somewhere in your heart that this is something I, I need to do and doing it regardless. So it's fine to feel scared about doing something. And it's fine, as I teach my students, to fail many times as you do something. Uh, but I think finding some way to find that courage to put yourself out there and when you get knocked down to get back up again, um, I think that's perhaps the, the most important lesson. Excellent. Excellent. I, I want you to reflect with me for a minute. Uh, really go back uh, in your life. What triggered your passion for change making? Hmm. Why do you do this? You no, know, you're one of the first people that's ever asked me that, which is a, a terrific question. Uh, and I think it's probably a combination of, of a couple of things. So it starts with the fact that I was one of the few that was born and raised in Silicon Valley. So I was born in Palo Alto, California, you know, minutes away from Google and Apple and Facebook. Uh, and so I've always had that sort of spirit of entrepreneurship in my blood. Mm -hmm. I created campus groups, um, 
and always love the idea of building something. So I think that's sort of the first piece is that uh, in entrepreneurial ethos. I think the second thing is um, being raised in a very values-driven family, you know, inspired by our Judaism, the idea of tikkun olam to uh, repair the world. And so I was having a feeling that there's something more to be done. Um, I went to UCLA following in the footsteps of my personal hero, who's Jackie Robinson. And Jackie Robinson says that uh, a life is not important except in the impact it has on others. And that quote's always, I think, really inspired me. Um, but I suppose if I were to look at one turning point, I think that turning point was probably uh, between my first and second year of graduate school. I was uh, studying abroad in India. And while there, I started volunteering with a local social enterprise. They were working with girls from the local slum and they were using sport as a tool for teaching lessons about female empowerment and leadership and healthy habits. And I think there I had my most profound insight, which of course sounds simple uh, in retrospect, but to realize that change comes from all of us pursuing our own vision of social good. That it doesn't rely on the big stodgy organizations, but there's change makers literally around the world. And I think once I got that hands-on experience, that's when I returned to the States and became really committed to a career of um, activating and inspiring change makers. Yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. Alex, what is your superpower? My superpower. Um, I think it's to lead with trust and to be trusted. So it's this great paradox in the world today, which is that I believe trust has never been more important, but also trust has never been more lacking. So if we think about um, somebody that trends today, rely on a bedrock of trust, but also all the data show that we're just trusting individuals, institutions far less. And for some reason, uh, I am willing to give others trust and they're willing to place trust in me. And it's a really virtuous cycle. And so I think um, by virtue of leading with trust and feeling comfortable trusting others, uh, I've been, giving, been given so much as a result of placing my trust in others. And that trust has been reciprocated many times over. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, Alex, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I really appreciate you sharing these insights about how to teach change making because we all need to learn to be better change makers. And those of us who are change makers seeking to in encourage others to do the same, we need to be able to teach those skills. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about your work at UC Berkeley and you and how they can connect with you, uh, you know, to learn more. Sure. I mean, I guess the place to start is I have a personal website, alexbudak.com. Uh, and from there, you can sign up for a newsletter I send out or on, on change making um, and learn more about the course and sort of my approach to change making. Uh, and also welcome you to reach out on Twitter, uh, where my handle is just my name, Alex Budak. But yeah, I always look forward to hearing from all types of change makers. And so I yeah, do hope that you'll reach out and connect. Fantastic. Well, Alex, again, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. And we uh, wish you every success in helping more people learn how to do change making well. Devin, thank you so much for having me. And thank you uh, sincerely for all the work you've done to inspire and catalyze change makers uh, yourself. No, oh, thank you. Now, let's do some good. All right. At Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thanks for tuning in to the Your Mark on the World show. The Social Impact Podcast. Please subscribe via YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. Mm -hmm.